Hey everybody, this is Bob with another audio tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at phase cancellation. So we'll start out by looking at a basic waveform and then define what phase cancellation is and then what you can do about it. So let's start by looking at a waveform that I created. Now I'm in Logic Pro. Uh, it doesn't matter which DAW you're using. This is audio principle. So um, this is going to apply to Cubase, to Pro Tools, to Sonar, whatever. So what I have recorded here in Logic is a basic sine wave. Now I took the test oscillator in Logic and just set it at 220 hertz and just let it run and then I recorded this on an audio track so we can take a look at a basic sine wave. Now this, let me zoom in here to this track that I have and you'll see what a basic sine wave looks like. So there you have it. So whenever we are recording an acoustic instrument, let's just say a stringed instrument, for example, you're playing an acoustic guitar, that string that's vibrating is subdividing it um, itself into several segments, and so you have harmonics in addition to the fundamental tone. They're partials of that vibrating string, whether it's a piano or a guitar or what have you. So this is what gives each instrument, including vocals, its unique characteristic is the partials that it creates. So as you heard in this sine wave, it doesn't have any of that. We're just looking at the fundamental tone. But this is a great way to demonstrate phase cancellation, as you'll see. Now, one of the things that we're looking at here, this the horizontal line that goes across here is kind of the null or the neutral point between the positive and negative. So look at this line above this horizontal line as positive a positive signal, and then when it drops below this horizontal point, this is your negative signal here. So if you ever watched a, an exposed speaker when it moves in and out, it pushes and pulls. You have the same kind of diaphragm in a microphone that pushes and pulls, and so that's what creates this, um, this signal that we're looking at here. So what is phase cancellation? Phase cancellation is when you have two tracks that have similar waveforms or identical waveforms and they're shifted in time a little bit to where they're out of phase with one another. So let me give you an example. I'm going to take this track here. I'm holding down the option key and I'm just going to make a copy of it and drag it and put it straight down. So what we have here now is we have two signals that are actually complementing one another. So when this signal goes up positive in peaks, this one does the exact same thing. So they're going to support and enhance one another. So it's going to give it a thicker, richer sound. In this case, since it's just a sine wave, it should increase the volume. So let's test that real quick. So I'm going to mute this track. So now we're just listening to this top track here. And let's look at our mix bus and see what we have. So coming out of our mix bus, we have minus 19, okay? So now I'm going to turn this other track on, and they should support one another since they're in phase, and it should be louder. Let's check it out. So you can see now with them combined, it increased the volume to minus 14 dB. How do they get out of phase? So when we have two microphones recording the same source, and I typically do this, let's say with an acoustic guitar. I have one mic on the 12th or 14th fret or 7th fret, somewhere around there, and then I might use another microphone on the bridge end of the guitar to get a different tonality, and then I may mix those two tones together. If I have a second microphone placed in such a way that the distance away from the source is going to record it at a later uh, time, it may shift this waveform. So for example, let me shift this over here to where it looks like it's out of phase now. So when this waveform is going negative, this one here shifted in time is going positive. So let's see what happens to the tone. So notice that the volume now on my uh, mix bus has dropped 
for these combined signals down to minus 38. So it's a very weak tone. So if this was an acoustic guitar or snare drum, it would just sound very thin because it's out of phase and weak, and you'd be able to hear that right away, especially when you do a comparison. Well, how do you do a comparison real quick? We well, need to put a plug-in in that will invert the phase of one of these. It doesn't matter since they're out of phase. Let's see what happens now. It's almost silent now. As a matter of fact, it is silent. There's nothing coming out of my mix bus. So you can see I can get this sine wave out of phase to where it actually goes silent. I get nothing out of it. So what most people suggest that you do is grab a plug-in, and I'm going to, in Logic, go to the Utility, go to the Gain plug-in. And it doesn't matter which track I put it on. I happen to be on this track here, the top one. Um, since they're 180 degrees out of phase, let me zoom back out here. Since they're 180 degrees out of phase, all I have to do is flip the phase invert switch, and they'll be back. So let me hit play. And now I'm going to hit the switch. So if you were comparing an instrument that was like this, out of phase, pretty much 180 degrees, you could put a phase invert plug in, something that'll flip the phase 180 degrees, and you could do a comparison by just listening. Now I want to explain to you why that may not work in all cases. Let's just look at this waveform as it completes a complete cycle, like it's a 360 degree circle. So let's start at the top here and just picture this going around in a circle and coming all the way back up here to 360 degrees, right? So if we picture this as a circle, as I come down here and, and come to this null point or this crossing point between positive and negative, this would be 90 degrees of my circle. So if I picture this as a circle, that's 90 degrees, right? And if I continue around, the bottom here would be 180 degrees, and then 270, and then back to 360. If I take this waveform here, when I look at where it peaks up here, if I peak that bottom one right here, I'll use this cursor to help, help me line up that point right there is what I'm looking at. So if I move this over here to right here, so instead of peaking here at 360 degrees, that next, that bottom track peaks right here at 90 degrees. If I flip the phase now, I'm not going to really hear any difference. So here's my gain plug in. I want to, um, I want to flip this 180 degrees. What's it going to do? It's going to move it from this 90 degree position. It's going to move it 180 degrees, which is going to be over here. It's still in the same relative position to this zero position. It's 90 degrees out over here instead of 90 degrees out here. Let's take a listen. So you can see that my volume there on my mix bus was minus 16 when I was playing this. And when I flipped the phase, it stayed at minus 16. That's because I really didn't do, I flipped the phase 180 degrees, but if it's 90 degrees out, all I'm doing is moving it over to 270. So that's why just simply grabbing a plug-in that you can flip the phase 180 degrees does not work in every case because I've had many times that I flipped the phase on something and I don't hear a difference, so it must be okay, right? Well, that's not exactly true. If, if I was 100% in phase... Actually, let, let me put these back in phase now, so, so let's see what we have. And if I flip the phase invert button now with them in phase, it should put it out of phase, right? Check it out. So I'm not perfectly in phase because I, I heard a little bit of tone there, but you get the point. So if I have something that's in phase and I, and I flip the phase on it, it should sound worse. Okay, so if I get myself in a situation where I can't hear the difference, maybe I'm closer to this 90 degree point 
and all I'm doing is moving it over to 270 or vice versa. So in this case, a phase invert uh, plug-in that just flips it 180 degrees does not work. By the way, where do you get yourself in a situation like this um, more often than not is a snare drum where you have a top mic and a bottom mic. The microphones are pointed directly at each other or close to it. And when you hit that top snare, what happens to that skin on that snare? It pushes down and the microphone's on top of it. And what happens to the skin on the bottom? It's pushing down, but the microphone's looking up. So you're actually getting the reverse thing happen in that diaphragm of that microphone. So while one is being pushed in, the other one's being pulled out. That's how you end up in the situation where you have a plug-in and just flip the phase and it's gonna work because it's gonna get it closer. But it's still, it's not perfect. What would be perfect would be for you to zoom in on your waveform. You can't see anything when you look like this, right? But when you zoom in on that waveform, you can very precisely look at these and you can match them or line them up. Another way you can do it is figure out how many samples you are from this, this point. Let's say we had something that was closer to 90 degrees. You could go into the sample uh, editor and you could do this. You could say, okay, the difference between this peak and this peak is so many samples. And then you could offset uh, with a delay plug-in, the sample delay. Uh, Logic has one, if you've ever used this, but if we go to delay, you'll see sample delay. So what you can do is you can actually delay the signal of the one that needs to be delayed by a certain number of samples. There's 101 samples, for example. So that's getting down to uh, a sample editor. So uh, it's a very interesting way of, of doing that. And if you're in Pro Tools, it has a very easy way to change the ruler to go up and see uh, how many samples you're looking at between uh, two points. So there's all kinds of ways of doing this, but my point is using a plug-in to flip the phase 180 degrees is not a perfect solution. It's better to find out how far out you are when you use two microphones um, and put them in phase that way. You'll have more bottom end you know, with your kick drum, with your overheads, with snare drums, and your acoustic guitar and anything you record will sound better if you get it in phase and do it a little bit more precisely. The other thing is uh, when you're recording, you could use this as a general uh, rule. It's more of a guideline than a rule, but when you're using two microphones, use the three-in-one rule. So for example, I have a microphone on a on the 12th fret on acoustic guitar and it's six inches away um, from that source that I'm recording. Let's say I want the next microphone to be three times that distance. So um, 18 inches away would be a good rule of thumb or more. Use that three and one rule and that'll uh, get you started. And then you can always, when you're using two microphones, go back and look at the waveforms and make sure that you're in phase. Okay, one other thing I want to share with you before I let you go is that phase cancellation is very much related to mono compatibility. So let me just show you one thing here. I have aligned this waveform up to be 100% phase canceled. So if I hit play now, it's 100% phase canceled. So I can go over, I have a gain plug-in on one of these. I'm going to hit play and phase invert. The tone comes back. Okay. Now, so we just tested that it's 100% out of phase. Watch what happens when I move the pan knobs now. So when I pan them left and right and get them out of the center, they're not phase canceled anymore, right? So where this one's going negative and this one here is going positive, that's a big deal if it's in mono because the sound's coming out of the same place in the speaker. But if I have this track going into the left speaker and this one going into the right speaker, they don't cancel each other now. Well, the problem with that is that you do your mixing this way, you start panning things, but if you put that same game plug-in on the mix bus, your stereo bus, 
then you can come over here and you can check for mono compatibility just by summing it to mono. So let's check that out. Notice as soon as I went to mono that these two tracks now cancel each other out. So that's really important to check your mixes for mono compatibility because you may not have any problem with the mixes the way everything is panned, but as soon as you sum to mono, you realize you have a phase problem. So another good way to check. So what you're listening for when you sum to mono, just make sure you don't have things start disappearing, like your snare drum or your kick drum or your guitars all of a sudden sound weak. So that's a good check for you. All right, if you guys um, have some better ways of doing this, please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.